Greetings, Zero here. Welcome back to the shiny only fire mod type run of Fire Red Canto Complete. Last time, we got our last gym badge, battled some random trainers who were a lot tougher than I anticipated. So, I had to do some off screen grinding and bought some rare candy and sell it on City just in case. Based on the level curve I've seen, I'm anticipating the Elite Four's Pokemon to be in the high 70s to high 80s. So, uh, yeah. My Pokemon are all in the early to mid 80s now, and, uh,. Well, also coupled out with the fact that Blue blatantly cheated in the last battle, with a Tyranitar knowing a Psychic type attack that it can't normally know, it's gonna be tough. So, without further ado, let's move on to Victory Road. So, here we reach the gate. Oh. Okay, and what's over here? Oh, so this leads to uh, Mount Silver. Okay, so we're going to have to rematch the Elite Four to get over here. Alright. Duly noted. Now, how's the route to Victory Road changed, if at all? Oh, while we're at it. Pop a uh, Max Repel. Choice Band. Greatly increases your attack power, but locks you into using one move. So that could be situationally useful. Now we get to the surfing portion, where, unlike in Gen 1, it doesn't change the surfing music. So you can actually hear the pretty awesome music here. Whereas in Gen 1, you couldn't hear it much because so much of this route was water. And here's something over here. A Never Melt Ice to boost your ice type attacks. Totally useless to me. Because I don't have any Pokemon that can know that, and none of my Pokemon's hidden power types are ice, at least as far as I know. Maybe the me the Ponita and the PC has an ice type in power, but I don't know. I don't think I'm ever going to use it. Okay. Hidden item over there. Yep, I see it. Poison Bar, booster poison type attacks. Again, useless to me. Nothing over here. But there is gonna be... Well, normally it's a hidden Ultra Ball, but it's a charcoal this time. Boost your fire type attacks. Could be situationally useful. Now, make it to the end. Now, let's see if Victory Road's changed at all. Hmm, not as far as I can tell. Uh, okay, so I guess it must, must be up there, then. Anything over here? Nope. Alright. There. There you go. First strength puzzle done. And we are going to battle every trainer on the way, because... Even now, I don't know if I've grinded enough. Okay, so the trainers here are a lot weaker than on the way to Victory Road, but... Well, not gonna let that catch myself off guard. 
Okay, come on. Nope. Nope. A lot of Petcha Berries. Pick up anything? Nope. There's two items here. I can only get one at a time. Let's get this one first. That's TM2 Dragon Claw. Okay, let's just uh, reset. Oh. Now we're back up here. And we can find out what the other item is. It's an iron. Eh, I could sell that. So now, face this asshole. Is your team nothing but Dub Trio? Okay, so you have a Diglett. Uh, no, not really. So now we move to the second floor. This is where you would normally encounter. Moltres in Gen 1, but the remakes, of course, moved to Mount Ember. Because, well, I got sick and tired of resetting for a shiny, and I'm like, eh, I got Charizard. I don't need it. Come on. Rain dance. Yes, I do. The red shard, which, as far as I know, is going to be worthless. All right, let's switch out and give another member of my team some experience. Maybe for you, but... And what's over here? Shadow Ball! Now we go up the ladder. First, we're going to take on this guy over here. What's he guarding? Fuck off, Armaldo. Yep, I am a prodigy. Not a child, just a prodigy. Nest ball. <laughs> okay, well, we're not actually going to push that over there yet, because first we're going to go down here. And here is an X attack. Okay, that that's just crap. I know X attack was useful in the Emerald playthrough, but I don't think it's going to be so useful this time. Okay, so we got to push you all the way over here. And over here, down like this, and over there. No hidden items. Okay, so now we take on these two.
Nope. That was actually a misclick, but whatever. It worked out in my favor. Well, I just chose myself, so what are you going to do about that? Well, believe it, it just happens. Alright, let's swap you out. Oh, what'd you pick up? Festo Berry. Useless. Okay, so now we push you down the hole. Oh yeah, we can't battle you yet. Now let's make... Oh yeah, we just gotta push it that way. I think that one was telling me it was off. Yep. Hold on. Let's... Nope, no hidden items. Alright, double battle. But nothing. You lost. Get over it. And now... We made it to the end, and this guy's not a traitor. He's actually a Moo Tutor who teaches Double Edge. If I had a Pokemon with the Rock Head ability, I'd take that in a heartbeat, but I don't. This is it. I think there's a couple more hidden items out here. A revive. What else we got? King's Rock gives your attacks a small chance to make an enemy flinch, but only certain attacks. And the game never tells you what these attacks are. Even though it's only like, what, a 5%? Which, 120, that can be clutch, but... Anyways, here we are. We've now reached the Indigo Plateau. What do you got to say? Hmm? Now, let's see... Oh, we'll have to pick that up off of you real quick. Now let's go over here and buy some items real quick. Yeah, as you can see, I got a lot of these things. Now, how much time have I been recording for? Maybe I could squeeze in the Elite Four. Oh, and on that note, you may wonder, how did I grind while, uh, I was between episodes? It involved mugging these bikers a lot. Just shy of 14 minutes, huh? You know what? Fuck it, let's do it. We're gonna beat the Elite Four today. We're gonna do it all in, in a row, so... Ready as I'll ever be. Also, somebody did a comparison of, uh, from the anime. If I recall correctly, well, now Lorela technically shows up, but she's not called Lorela in the dub. She's called Con she's called something else. It what did they call her Kana, which is her Japanese name? I forget. No. Because well, 
point is, apparently she's got the biggest tits in the whole series. The more you know. Hmm. Well, too bad. It don't seem that way, but it is. Alright, well. As expected, that was pretty easy. Especially Sneasel. Sneasel just gets fucked because... It's a, an Ice and Dark type, and both of those are special prior to Gen 4. But its dominance stats are physical attack. Anyways, moving on. Alright, well... Let's take... Let's go with Atar here, because he got Psychic. There we go. Okay, you know what? Maybe I overestimated the strength of the Elite Four. Although, to be fair, I base that on the level curve leading up to them, so... Well, yeah. Oh, you actually knocked one of my Pokémon out! I'm impressed! Hmm. You lost because I am heavily overleveled. Again, I was expecting things to be a lot tougher than they were, so, uh, whoops. I have a feeling that one so-called Elite Four member may actually be about the strength of the champion in the first battle with him. We'll see. Oh, Repel War Off. Okay, well, I know who's going next. Garm, you're going out, because you're Dark-type. Sunny day. Ha! Shedinja. That's cheeky. If you don't have any means to take out a Shedinja, well, this would be where you would lose by default, I guess. Okay. I mean, hey, at least she uses more ghost types than in, in her normal team. Okay, so this time we're definitely sending in Charizard first because you have Dragon Claw. In fact. I think I'm going to give you the Dragon Fang to boost its power real quick. He's normally holding the Miracle Seed to boost it in power. It's a hard counter to water types. <laughs> I'm ready to lose? Oh, I should be asking you the same thing. Bye! Ooh, oh, that's a huge level jump. Okay. Maybe I was prepared. Okay, why is Kingdra his ace? Down you go. Yep. Okay. Now give you back the Dragon Fang. Let me just check my power points on every move real quick. Okay, no, we'll use an, an either on Atar to get Psychic back up. Ooh, 
Now I'm gonna, this is gonna be a little risky if he starts off with Pidgeot, but I'll see if I get a chance to set up. Although he may actually start with uh, Alakazam instead. Yep! Ha! Even with a type advantage, he still couldn't one-shot it. GG. Alright. You served your purpose. But it's over now. Alright, fine, be that way. And Flareon for the win! It's all over. Yeah, you showed the haters. Worst evolution? Bullshit. Yeah, so am I. I honestly thought you'd be tougher. Although, to be fair, his team is about as strong as his rematch team in vanilla. Which means he's probably going to be a lot tougher in the rematch. I'm going to guess probably 80s or 90s. Maybe even up to level 100. Who knows? And cut real quick, because we're coming up on 10 minutes here. Final team is... Pele, the Blaziken. Uh, Hakowitz, the Typhlosion? Agni, the Charizard. Garm, the Houndoom. Atar, the Magmar. And Sparog, the Flareon. That's Hall of Fame 1 complete. We'll have to do this a second time, of course, to unlock Mount Silver. As for the time on there, well, you speed up in an emulator, it tends to do that. Well, he was in a hurry. We'll just sit through this, I guess. Namesake of the Masuda method. Program leader, Tetsu Watanabe. <laughs> Which, uh, yeah, fun fact. Game Freak can't code for shit. Gen 1 almost... Well, Gen 1 and Gen 2 both needed to have a Satoru Iwata brought in from HAL Laboratories just to make them work. And they still can't code for shit. Which is why they've had to outsource Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and actually, I believe, Scarlet and Violet versions. Or at least part of it had to be outsourced. Toshi Jiri, the creator of Pokemon. Also, he's been dead for a while. I forget exactly how long. Anyways, as for it, how he got the inspiration for this, um, fun fact. A popular hobby in Japan is basically to raise insects, or arthropods in general, and just have them fight each other. Especially beetles. But it can be other ones too, like scorpions, things like that. So, uh, Satoshi was into that quite a bit when he was a kid, so that was his inspiration for Pokemon. In fact, he had something of an autistic obsession with bugs to the point where he was. his friends called him Dr. Bug.
Jotaro Iwata, aka the real hero of this story. Without him, Gen 1 may have never been finished. Same with Gen 2. He's also the only reason that Mew was even in the first games at all. I mean, yeah, you had to you had to execute a glitch to get it. But otherwise it would have had to be cut for time. He's also the only reason why Kanto fit in Gen 2 at all, though it had to be heavily truncated. Like, Viridian Forest became the Viridian Hedge Maze. Um, Sifo Mylands became one room. Cerulean Cave was cut entirely, and the Safari Zone had to be cut. Although there was one map for the Safari Zone, which is still left in the files. There's no encounter data for it, but it's there. And that's the end. Anyways, I think that'll do it for now. If you like what you see, check out my Rumble page, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you all next time.